Hello ladies and gentlemen, once again this is Jeremy Smith. As you guys know, lots and lots of new things have been coming out into the market. There's been all sorts of new lens and camera announcements. As a Sony user though, the big thing that people have been asking me about a lot lately is the Sony a7R 4 Now as you guys may already know, I am a user of the Sony a7R 3 and the A9, and this video has been filmed with an A6500, so I would say I have lots of Sony thoughts. Now for me, the a7R 4 you know, is, was frankly a shock, you know, I thought we would see an a7S 3 first, um, and if not an a7S 3 I thought we would definitely see an a7S 3 <laughs> But instead of that, we got the a7R 4 Now, the first thing people asked me was, do you think 61 megapixels is too much? Sadly, that's not a question that we can answer today. This is going to require a lot more uh, sort of thinking and processing. And um, I do kind of, I do kind of have some opinions about that already. And my main answer right now I can give you is, well, it depends. <laughs> and so we'll get into that later on. But the next set of questions about the A7R 4 had to do with all the physical characteristics of the camera. A lot of people were eager to know about the grip. Now, for me, coming from Nikon DSLRs like the D800 and A10 and D600 and on and on. I basically didn't want something that was going to feel, you know, uh, uncomfortable for me to use, but I didn't want a really big and massive camera. Now, I'm not going to argue about ergonomics. That's kind of like arguing about your favorite soft drink flavor or something. It's just a dumb thing to argue about. It's very, very personal preference. But I can tell you guys, based on my opinions, the A7 III series, A7R III series cameras, fit my hands fine. I didn't really have any grip complaints at all. I felt like it was a nice compromise between the smaller camera body and still, you know, having a grip that was usable. I will say, if you are the type of person that felt like the existing cameras were too small, I think you'll be much, much more happy with the A7R 4 The grip is much deeper, and uh, somehow, Sony did something miraculous to me, and that is, they made the grip bigger and more comfortable for, for people that like that type of feel, that larger grip feel, but they didn't make it so much larger that it made the camera bulky to kind of turn off guys like me who, you know, do kind of like the smaller size of the Sony bodies. So I think that they did a great job there. Now, you will be disappointed if you're looking for a grip that puts a lot of space between the camera lens and the grip itself. So if you're using something like, say, the 85mm 1.4 G Master, Yes, you're still going to have a little bit less space between the mount and the camera body. So, or the mount and the grip. So, uh, yeah, that's still an issue, sadly to say. The other thing that people were asking me about was just the overall feel of the camera. Um, you know, other things like the buttons are definitely improved. Again, for me, you know, I don't really, uh, I don't really find the dials or the buttons rather hard to use on the existing cameras. If I were the type of person that shot outdoors a lot and I use gloves, uh, then yeah, I mean the existing camera buttons could definitely be a problem. If you feel in, fit into that category of uh, sort of photographer where you're doing doing a lot of outdoor shooting and things like that, then yes, I mean you will be very pleasantly surprised by these new buttons. They're a lot more tactile. They're they're very very deep and they're just really pressy. They're really pressy buttons. It's nice to nice to feel, <laughs> and uh, they work much much better for that. They also changed the focus joystick a little bit. I found that I found that Sony's existing joystick it's it's definitely serviceable. It's uh, it's not uncomfortable to use, but sometimes when I'm using it, I do find that my thumb sort of slips a bit. This new one does not have that problem. It has a nice little sort of rubberized pad that you put your thumb on, and it's very easy to move about. It also seems to be a little bit more clicky and and a little bit more well defined. So I'd say that's also a worthy improvement. The big button change though, button slash dial change on this camera that I was happy to see was that they finally put a lock on the exposure compensation dial. Yes, yes, thank God, they finally did it. <laughs> on every shoot, well, not every shoot because I'm the type of guy that mostly shoots on manual. I use a lot of flash and so I'm not really using the exposure comp a lot. But every once in a while, if I'm shooting an event or something like that, a lot of times one of my cameras will be shooting with available light and you know with no flash while the other camera is shooting with flash. And for that available light camera, I like to shoot on manual, but I like to put the ISO in automatic. 
So yeah, then the exposure compensation comes into play. And I've kind of trained my brain to go ahead and look at that exposure meter and tell me if there's any compensation applied because um, yeah, I'm usually going to bump the dial just about every time. So having a lock on this is really nice. Now, Sony, they kind of took a page out of Fuji's playbook and they adopted a dial lock that doesn't have to be pressed every single time you turn the dial. So if you're the type of person that says, well, you know, I never bump the dials and I just hate those locks, you can go in there and you can press that unlock button and it pops up and then guess what? You don't have to use it ever again. It just stays off and it works out perfectly fine. Um, but then if you do want to use the lock, you can just press it down and lock it and it works really, really well. It's very intuitive. That's something that I love on the Fuji cameras like the X-T2 and X-T3. And so Sony has adopted that on this camera as well. Now, if I had to be super nitpicky about this, I would say that um, Sony, you should have just gone ahead and done that to the mode dial as well to keep the consistency. But unfortunately, the mode dial is still set up to where you have to press and hold uh, the button every single time you use it. So you're basically forced into using the lock on the exposure uh, dial, but not a huge thing, but it would have been nice to see some, see some continuity in the design between those dials. And let's see, what else? Uh, oh yeah, the back command dial, it's sort of repositioned. It's not sort of like molded into the body now, it sort of sits above. So again, you know, if you're the type of person that's going to be shooting outdoors in the frozen tundra or something like that somewhere, and you're using gloves, it's gonna be much easier for you to get to, get to that uh, dial as well. So that's a good improvement, I'd say as well. Also, the other thing is, we now see some continuity in the card slot design of this camera, which is awesome. And as best as I can tell, um, I'll have to, you know, I have to remember, I don't, I don't even remember if I uh, looked at this, but I don't think this camera supports Sony memory stick anymore, which is good. I mean, that's, it's about time Sony completely got rid of that design. Uh, so now you just have dual UHS-2 slots. And uh, anyways, you get the full speed in both those slots. So you don't have like the fast slot and the slow slot like you did in the previous generation cameras. For me though, that's not even the big deal. The big deal that I'm happy about, as a person who's a little bit slower type of shooter, uh, a little more deliberate with my shooting style, I'm just happy that Sony labeled card number one as the top slot and card number two as the bottom slot. That's a big deal. I mean, that right there, you know, it, it ah, my goodness, you have, you guys have no idea how, how uh, much I hated having card slot number two at the top. So this is a big improvement for me. The other thing that I was happy to see on this camera from a physical standpoint is, yes, again, happy dance. Sony finally learned how to make port covers properly. Now, if you guys know me, you know I'm very picky about my port covers. Look at this side of the camera. Yeah, yeah, Sony Fisher Price called. They want their car cover door back. Anyways, in the video, I'll show you here a little bit of uh, the uh, A7 III compared to the uh, A7R4. And this is a rental A7 III that I had. And that camera, as you can see, is missing one of its port covers because, you know, it's a rental camera. It's been passed around a lot. So yeah, that's something I've always been afraid that would happen on some of the existing Sony models. Thankfully, it never happened on my camera, but uh, yeah, it's clearly been an issue for a lot of people. So now Sony has these much nicer uh, port covers that are much more like what you'd have on a Nikon or a Canon. As a matter of fact, they even look even maybe a little bit more engineered than the ones on Nikon and Canon. So they really outdid themselves here. So I was happy to see that. Anyways, that's about all the things I noticed from a physical standpoint. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and toss a few uh, samples in the description below. Obviously, I haven't had a chance to test this camera a ton. Really, in testing this camera so far, I've been a lot more impressed with Sony's lens lineup. Uh, looking at lenses like the 135 1.8, the 85 1.4, and the 24 1.4 G Master lenses on this camera, the fact that those lenses can still be shot at very wide apertures and hold up to the 61 megapixels of resolution that this camera produces, to me, that's the thing I've been even more impressed uh, with than the camera itself. Uh, another little quick note, taking a look at it, uh, I looked at the, uh, you know, the new EVF, it is up to around five and a half million dots, 
which the previous generations were around three and a half million. I didn't really get that big wow factor like I did whenever I went from the A7R2 series to the A7R3 series cameras, where you could look through and see this immediate and discernible difference. Didn't really see that happen again. I mean, a lot of my colleagues who got their hands on the camera before me, you know, I first asked them, how was the viewfinder? And they were like, oh, well, it was nice. Um, it looked just like the existing cameras. I mean, a lot of them weren't even aware that they changed the viewfinder. So it's not a huge wow factor. Um, but if you go looking for it, you definitely see some differences if you do any type of critical manual focusing or if you're looking at uh, patterns, you know, with lots of vertical or horizontal lines, you can definitely see less al aliasing and less more ray artifacts and so on. So it is better. Um, I'll be looking at that in more de detail and time will tell how that uh, behaves. It is still a little bit smaller than some of the uh, viewfinders found in, say, the Canon EOS R, for example. But um, anyways, all in all, very, very good. Nice thought update. Anyways, guys, this is kind of the initial bit. Um, you know, I'm going to be doing a lot more testing. Uh, there's a few other things I noticed. I noticed that they changed the viewfinder, not viewfinder, but the uh, autofocus point color. That was very nice. Having the uh, option to select between either white or red is way better than the black points in the previous cameras. You can actually see it, so that's good. And uh, there is eye autofocus in video. I just briefly kind of tested that to s just basically to see that it did its thing but I haven't obviously given it like a full test yet. So that's something else I'll be looking at. But uh, write me in the comments, let me know what else you'd like to see. Hopefully in the next couple weeks, I will have a review unit that I can keep for a while and do more testing with. And it's not something that's just sort of passing through my hands quickly. But uh, anyways, as always, I wanted to kind of get the dialogue going. So go ahead and write me and let me know what sorts of things you're curious about on this new camera. And we will go from there. Uh, don't forget to follow me on social media. As always, I can be found by my very modest name of Photog J the Great. And uh, until next time, guys, this is Jeremy Smith, signing off.